What if everyone in your congregation were all in, energized by the gospel? How can we encourage every follower of Jesus to be a passionate believer? And what ingredients do believers need to have to be passionate about reaching others with the gospel? Pastor David Jameson will share with us some of his experiential journey for creating a culture of evangelism in the local church. Welcome. You're watching Ministry in Motion, where we share best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. Pastor David Jamison, welcome to Ministry in Motion. It is so good to be here with you today, Ivan. David, I have been to your church. I've seen you in action. And uh, I'm just excited about you conveying how the Lord has blessed you. Where do you pastor, by the way? I pastor in Langley, British Columbia, Canada. Yes. And I have been at this same church called Church in the Valley for 17 years. What a blessing. That shows me you are a man of resilience <laughs> <laughs> and staying power. Well, you know, it is every pastor's and every ministry leader's desire to have people who are serving alongside them with passion. It almost exudes the, the point that not every believer is passionate, or at least yes. that doesn't come out mm -hmm. in their service. So let's dive in. Um, you know, when you think about helping people to become passionate, and the whole backdrop is creating a real environment and a culture so churches can reach other people for Christ, a church of evangelism. Tell us your story. What, what is the beginning of that? You know, you've been at your church 17 years, and when you went there, was this a passion of yours right away? You know, it's been a passion for me from the moment that I became a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. I became a Seventh-day Adventist at the age of 18. Hmm. Had the privilege of knocking on doors while going in gathering, um, being involved in a first church district and not being successful in reaching people in the community for Christ through public evangelism and yeah. wanted it to be because I believe that the Seventh-day Adventist message is the most wonderful message mm. in the entire world. And so from the very beginning of my journey, I wanted to discover how to package it better and share it so that people would receive it and love it like I do. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, tell me about it. How do we begin this journey of helping other believers become passionate about what they believe? Well, you know, 86% of churches across all denominational lines are declining. Yes. Only 7% are holding their own and 7% are actually growing. Mm. And so one of the first thoughts that I begin to share with people is that if you go to an airport and there are no planes landing or taking off, we obviously say something's wrong. Yeah. If you go to a train station and there are no trains coming and going, we say something's wrong. Mm. But we go to church week after week, month after month, year after year. There may not be much happening by way of baptismal growth or disciple making. And we carry on as if everything is fine. <laughs> and so one of the things is leading people to a moment of discontent with the status quo and yeah. pointing them to Jesus Christ in total faith that he is still just as powerful today as he was 2,000 years ago when he walked on this planet. Mm. And he shared in the Gospel of John, greater works will ye do. And we wow. just have to believe that's our first step. So it sounds like being mediocre is not an option in the service to the Master Jesus. Absolutely not. It's all about giving 100%, giving yeah. our all, being all in. So how do you create this, this, this culture, this atmosphere of, of service? And really, what if a leader never ramps up their passion? Um, 
you know, how do you deal with that? But l let's, let's start with um, this whole piece of how do you impact the change um, in your congregation? Sure. My experience has been that the first stage in the process of building a church of passionate believers is to own, model, and prioritize evangelistic uh, vision and values. Mm. And it all begins with your own personal walk with God. Okay. And so I really believe that spending an hour a day in the Word and in prayer is where the pastor receives power, where mm -hmm. the pastor gets a God-given vision. Hmm. You know, we brought along Steps to Christ. And yes. uh, Steps to Christ, page uh, 46, says this, talking about Jesus. It says, His humanity made prayer a necessity and a privilege. And if the Savior of men, the Son of God, felt the need of prayer, how much more should sin feeble, sinful mortals feel the necessity of fervent, constant prayer? Wow. And she also said, consecrate yourselves to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. So the whole beginning of encouraging one and one becoming personally passionate is to encourage them to spend time themselves with Jesus. Yes. And Prayer as, and Bible study, you yes. said. Hmm. And as a pastor, I've made it a practice to spend an hour a day in the Word, just read through the entire Bible again myself in the last awesome. four months, modeling this to the congregation. Yes. And the first step in the journey when I came to Church in the Valley uh, was to challenge the congregation to read through the entire Bible with me in six months mm. so that our people are in the Word, our yes. people are praying. That is wonderful. Um, and so what if one becomes passionate? And that's the goal, that's the prayer, that's the journey. Um, how then do you instill in that congregation with those believers this whole piece of an evangelistic vision. How do you get there? <laughs> well, for me, it's an every Sabbath occurrence. And so we have always led our congregations that I've pastored to enter into a vision weekend, a vision summit, mm -hmm. where we have come out of that with what we believe is a God-given vision or dream for the congregation. And there's usually a motto. Years ago in uh, the church in Langley where I pastor, our motto was sharing the Christ who cares. Mm. And we would stand up in front of our congregation during the middle of the worship service in what we called ministry moments and cast that vision through the motto every single Sabbath. And mm. in every meeting of the church, whether it be an elders meeting, a board meeting, or whatever, we would cast that vision and get people hearing the language, beginning to internalize it, and then within about a year to live it out. Mm. Really? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. And so uh, does the board take the lead on this? And, you know, are they infectious as well? Yes. Okay. Uh, out of that vision summit, we usually elect a dream team. Okay. That will take all of the information that's been gathered from the congregation and packaging it into a document. It goes back to the Board of Elders, then to the church board, and then every single member receives a copy of that document, which is typically for us a three-year plan for the congregation, including baptismal goals, church attendance goals. And back then in 2001, November of 2001, mm -hmm. before anything had ever happened, we said our church was going to grow so large that we would either have to purchase property to build a new one or expand the current facility. There hadn't been a baptism, there hadn't been a dollar spent. Hold that thought. David, we'll be right back. You're watching Ministry in Motion. You're watching Ministry in Motion. We're talking with Pastor David Jamison about building passionate believers and creating a culture of evangelism. And David, now that people have studied the Word and experienced Christ for themselves Amen. and their passion level rises and mm -hmm. they get involved, um, and then you instill a vision of evangelism, 
What are some of the things that you do, um, like outreach events? Um, how do you make them innovative, attractive? Um, what's going on in the Church of the Valley with this whole concept? Sure. Once we have got people to a point where they're in the Word, mm -hmm. they're beginning to believe, yes. the next step is to move them from the realm of seeing is believing to believing is seeing. Mm. Because most people do not believe that anything is going to happen mm. until they see it with their own eyes. <laughs> and so we move to that third stage, which is innovating high impact outreach events. Yeah. And one of the uh, typical events that I've done uh, in churches that I've pastored is a police appreciation day. Okay. And so we will invite the police to come, the local politicians, the uh, provincial or state politicians and federal politicians. We'll have the biggest Sabbath that this church has ever had with the biggest fellowship lunch, the largest attendance to show people that if we move forward believing that God has a plan and vision for us, yes. that he will help us to implement it. And so that becomes a a big motivator for people to begin to believe in the visionary process. Yeah, so let's take me there. You have all of these community uh, police coming into your congregation. What does an event like that do for your congregation? Does it create momentum? Um, their level of trust, does it go up? Um, and what other things may are you doing? Sure, it, it becomes the law of the big mo. It creates mm. momentum and excitement. People begin to say, maybe something is going to happen now, finally, in our congregation. They mm. begin to believe and they say, Pastor, can we do it again? Wow. And so we will innovate an event like a single mom's oil change where we invite single moms in the community to come yes. to our church and we change their oil free of charge. Mm. And we may do 30 to 70 vehicles and the congregation says, this is fun. <laughs> uh, we like this and children are involved and young adults are involved and adults and they begin to say something is happening, the wheels are turning momentum is beginning to happen, let's do more. That's amazing. And, you know, once that momentum is going and, and, and pastor, let's do more, does that mean more work for you, more work for them? Uh, how do you set this model up? How do you get people who help to change the culture? Well, if there's one thing that's extremely true is that the pastor cannot do it alone. And gotcha. so there is a motivational process that's involved. And that fourth stage is recruiting evangelistic champions or culture setters. And it's following the example of Jesus. Jesus purposely selected and mentored 12 disciples. You can call them 12 uh, yeah. culture setters who were going to be the leaders in the evangelism cause 2,000 hmm. years ago. And yeah. so if we follow that same example today, a pastor needs to look throughout his congregation, be praying and asking God to point him to the evangelistic champions and culture setters in the church who will help him move from a desire of wanting to do something to be able to organize to do more in the community. So it's moving from a vision theory to action steps, it sounds like. Yes, to implementation. implementation. And quite, oft, quite often we'll miss this stage. Yeah. And we'll move to try and motivate the masses when in actuality we need to find the culture setters, leaders, or evangelistic champions first. And have you found that that has greater impact than maybe you standing up and trying to set that culture alone? Absolutely. When you, <laughs> when you have an elder, when you have a young adult, when you have a lady in the congregation and they are now standing up and saying, let's share the Christ who cares together in our congregation and in our community. The more people that are sharing that message, beginning to believe in it and living it out, the mm. greater the momentum that takes place in a congregation. You know, I've been to your church. I've worshiped with you there. Um, and 
I, I want to ask you a, a, a question. Sure. Your greeters were phenomenal. Um, have you spent time with them, and is that a evangelistic culture center yes, as is. well? Yes, it is. Tell me about that. We have deliberately set up a guest services system okay. so that when someone comes to our parking lot, they are greeted once or twice in the parking lot before they even get into our building. Yes. Uh, they are greeted at the door, and uh, we have our elders actually functioning on Sabbath morning in our atrium to be key greeters mm. so that when a new guest is uh, greeted at the door, they're immediately turned over to an elder. An elder will take them to the welcome center, get them a guest luncheon card and a gift bag, sign them up if they're willing to give their name and information, and then take them wherever they want to go into a building to a Sabbath school class for themselves, for their kids, and so on. What a blessing. What a blessing. And I tell you, uh, having been there, people's senses are aware they know when visitors are coming. And, uh, you know, the church building that the Lord bless you to build, you actually placed in it this oil changing station. Were there any other things in mind? Because I believe this is all a part of our conversation to build passionate believers and set this evangelistic culture. The building makes a difference. Yes, it in does. setting that culture, correct? Absolutely. Uh, we wanted to build a facility that the community would use. Okay. Our facility has been open for just over two years, and mm. we have had over 50,000 people go through that building. It is used seven days a week. Wow. Seventh-day Adventist, we use it on Friday night and all day Sabbath and whenever we want, but it is used, uh, as you mentioned, for oil changes, we have a three bay garage, Yeah. Uh, we have a climbing wall, we have Canadian blood services that will come into our facility every second Tuesday and hundreds of people will come and donate blood and on and on the list goes. Hold that thought, David, because he's been at his church 17 years. The building is only two years old. We'll talk more with him when we come back. You're watching Ministry in Motion. Welcome back. We're talking with Pastor David Jameson, who is really revolutionizing the way to help change the culture of a church becoming more evangelistic. And David, when we left, we were talking about your building. Uh, you've been pastoring there at the Church in the Valley in the Vancouver, uh, British Columbia area for 17 years, but the building is only two years old. And you were very intentional about what the building's purpose was. And you said 50,000 people have come through there. Yes. What else? Um, in fact, if a, if a pastor or a building chairperson is listening, what else would you share with them about the purpose of the building and spaces to use uh, to help create this culture? Sure. We wanted to build a church that impacted the community. Okay. While we were building the facility, we went to the mayor and the local politicians and we shared with them, we want you, we mm. want the community to use our building. And they, they loved that thought. Mm. And so we have the three bay garage for oil changes. Mm -hmm. We. Uh, have people in the community donate vehicles and we give them away to single moms after we've repaired them. We have a, an acts of kindness center where an AA group meets, where a pain support group meets, uh, where narcotics anonymous uh, groups have met and mm. so on. We have a climbing wall. We have a full gymnasium with all of the equipment and people are able to come and use it free of charge. Yeah. We have a suite for a, a hotel room essentially for families that are I'm going through an emergency. I That's stayed right. in you the stayed room. In <laughs> and uh, a food pantry, a clothing pantry. I guess we were answering the question, if Dorcas were here today, Yes. What would she do 
in 2018 to minister to the community? Would it just mm. be the giving away of food and clothing, which is a wonderful ministry, or yes. would it be more innovative than that? That is a great, great question. Um, wow. So the building was set up for this. 50,000 people. Man, that is a lot. So has the community said to uh, the church in the valley, uh, we do want to use your building? Uh, any organizations, have, have they used your facility for meetings and so forth? Absolutely. Okay. From the Royal Canadian Mounted Police okay. to the local politicians to teachers conventions and school graduations and the Canadian Blood Services. We even have people come and do birthday parties for their children <laughs> around our climbing wall and our sports court. Yeah. And so however we can get people into our facility to rub shoulders with us and to learn a little bit more about Seventh-day Adventists, we're happy to do that. We, we have people coming into the facility, they say, wow, what an incredible facility. But we want to move them to say, wow, what an incredible message the Seventh-day Adventist Church has. Amazing, amazing. Tell me about these diversified evangelistic teams. Well, after a pastor has recruited evangelistic champions, Mm -hmm. We want those evangelistic champions and culture setters to find four or five more individuals to serve on a team with them. And so our sharing the Christ who cares model, mm -hmm. that cares word was an acronym. Celebrating God through joyful worship, assisting each other in ministry, reaching others for Christ, expressing ourselves through service, and strengthening the fellowship of the church. So there were five mm. leaders, C-A-R-E-S, they found five or six others to form teams. So we had a worship arts team, mm. we had an evangelism team, we had a service team, and so on. Because okay. in a slow-paced world, a good executive can manage things and make things happen. Mm. In a moderately paced world, it takes teams. Sure. But in a world such as we're living in today that's fast paced, technology changing, right. teams are enormously important in bringing about a culture shift in the congregation towards evangelism. I gotta ask you this, it's the elephant in the room. What if you have a leader that doesn't fit the bill. Um, kind of a cog in the wheel stopping the process. How have you had to deal with that person as a pastor? Well, you know, we tried to work with every personality mm -hmm. that is there. And when a congregation is moving along towards a vision, gaining momentum, the last thing that you want is for someone to be sidestepping or second guessing. And so the first thing that I'll do is set up an appointment and, and go and visit and have a conversation and, and see if there's a, a way to have a meeting of the minds and to cast a little bit more vision. Because sometimes people are just not quite sure where you're going. Mm. And if you can give them one or two more steps where you believe God is leading you, sometimes it can help bring them on board. Sure. And, and then there are other times when, when people probably have to come to their own conclusion and say, Pastor, you know, maybe this is not for me. Interesting. You know, you talked about teams, volunteers, always a challenge. How has that worked for you? What would you suggest? You know, we stumbled upon something that, has, gotta, that has worked. Our time is moving short, so please answer this. This okay. is amazing. We basically activate people in the congregation to use the talents, skills, passions, and abilities that they already have residing within them. Ah. So we get the mechanics to work in the garage and use mechanics for Jesus. We get the people who like to do construction, to do extreme home repairs, and we repair a home every year now for 15 years mm. in our community. We get the folks who like to cook to use their cooking skills at the breakfast club, and we get people who love to golf, to golf for Jesus and to raise funds <laughs> through a golf tournament to help support all these ministries. And over the last number of years, we've raised over $600,000 to go towards funding all of these acts of kindness ministries. Volunteers stay in their areas of passion and it seems to be congruent. David, thank you so much for being with us on Ministry of Motion. It is my pleasure to have been here today, Ivan. Thank you. 
We've had a vibrant discussion about building a church of passionate believers, creating a culture of evangelism in the local church. Here's what Pastor David Jamison shared, that we should own and model and prioritize personal spirituality. Then he said, instilling evangelistic vision and values in the congregation is important. Innovating high impact outreach events, recruiting evangelistic champions and culture setters, developing a diversified evangelism team, and then lastly, creating a revolutionary volunteer culture. Thank you for watching Ministry in Motion. For this and other programs, visit our website at www.ministryinmotion.tv. Until next time, may the Lord bless you in all you do.